Can I stop <laughs> coming with you? Good morning <laughs> and welcome uh, to the August 11th, 2017 meeting of the DNA subcommittee. I'm Dwight Adams along with Drs. Kidd, Sozer, and Eastman. Uh, that constitutes a quorum and uh, we are ready to begin. You've all received a draft agenda for today's meeting. Uh, do I have a motion to approve that agenda? So move. Thank you, Dr. Kidd. Second? Second. Thank you, Dr. Souza. Uh, all in favor, uh, signify by raising your hand. Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. You've also received a draft copy of the minutes from the May 19th, 2017 meeting. Are there any questions or comments related to those minutes? Hearing none, uh, do I have a motion to approve? Make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Second by Dr. Eastman. All in favor signify by raising the hand. Unanimous again. Okay, we'll move on to the accreditation and laboratory updates. We have uh, two um, laboratories in today's meeting. The first is Erie County. Any comments, questions? We can certainly get someone on the phone if they're not present in person. Um, I have a question, but uh, I thought uh, Dr. Simich was the technical leader, the DNA technical leader. Did that change before? It did. Okay. All right. I believe there was a notification at one of the previous meetings that Thomas Grill had accepted that position. Okay, okay. Any other comments or questions related to Erie County? No vote is required, so we'll move on to New York State Police Crime Lab. Comments or questions? I have a question. Um, it's an off-site surveillance review. What is that? I'm the director of New York State Police. So um, on every four year, or in this case we have a five year cycle, one year um, is permitted to be, or by, and this is established by ANAB, uh, an off site surveillance. So there's required annual surveillance. And again, this is sort of somewhat news to us as well because we're always used to somebody coming on site. Uh, but in this case, they're permitted to do one off site. So what they did is a full review of all our accreditation documentation provided everything that they asked for, but just provided that in, in documentation, paper copy. And in turn, they did the entire surveillance, which I'd actually say. Do they do any, like, uh, Skyping in, or they don't they don't talk to anybody, or? Uh, we're certainly available to talk uh -huh. to them. In this case, it was a fully just a documentation. Is, is this in play? Uh are they also doing on-site surveillance visits certainly. as well? Certainly. Uh, we just, um, albeit it's not the subject of this meeting's uh, on the agenda this meeting, we had the uh, actual on-site external audit as well, but that's a separate audit, which will be coming probably next week. Okay. And Dr. Eastman, th these have occurred for a little bit now, and uh, our experience is that they're not just submitting paper and, okay, that's fine. There's a lot of back and forth, mm -hmm. and maybe Ray can speak to that. So when you submit documents, they're fairly aggressive about saying, this isn't responsive, we need more documents, we need back and mm -hmm. forth. So while it's not a physical foot on presence evaluation, it's a very comprehensive review of the actual documents that support their accreditation program. Correct. Okay, so, but this one says all the data was collected on the 1st of July. Uh, as in that's where we would have submitted all of that information. Okay, yes. okay. And, uh, as mentioned by uh, Mr. Gestrin, there certainly would have been a lot of interchange in terms of us just making sure that they had what they needed or any questions were available. Um, but they did not actually set foot physically mm -hmm. in our building. Okay. You had no findings, correct? Correct, and there were no findings. Well, I, I reviewed the document, and most of it's boilerplate, but there are some comments made by the uh, assessor, and there's statements like the lab is complaint with this criteria. Um, 
The lab does follow up on complaints revived by its customers. The lab is compliant with this criteria. They don't proofread. Oh, compliant with this criteria? I think they meant compliant. I'm not sure about revived. I guess that means received. <laughs> I, I mean, can I suggest that you send this back and have them correct it? I mean, the, it doesn't make sense. So there were findings. It just has to do with uh, they're not. The uh, there were no findings. It's laboratory. just that they didn't proofread their document before sending it to you. We certainly, yeah, we're not generally in the habit of sending back something when there's no findings, but we certainly can <laughs> ask them to. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I, it just, I would want it correct. Um, yeah, we can certainly do that. It's a good catch, Dr. Easton. Thank you. That's very, very thorough of you on your part. I Thank didn't you. read all the other stuff. I assume their boilerplate doesn't have any mistakes in it. Yeah. Other comments or questions? <laughs> Okay, thank you. We'll now move into old business. Um, first item on the old business agenda is an update on the state's partial match program. Brian. Sure. So to date, there's been 92 names that have been requested as part of this program. Uh, statistical evaluation could not confirm with 44 of those. Total names released was 48. Uh, there are currently none that are pending statistical evaluation. 46 cases are closed. Two remain active. Um, a relative was identified in three potential cases. Uh, two resulted in arrest, and actually the, an update from last time is two have resulted in conviction. Any comments or questions for Brian? Okay, let's move into new business. Um, at our last, last meeting, we had a few comments uh, and questions regarding materials that might be reutilized in DNA analysis, like racks, and if they are reused, uh, how are they decontaminated? Uh, we have members of the biological uh, technical working group here today to provide us with an update. You also have in your new items that were provided a summary of a survey they did, which I think is uh, pretty self-explanatory. Do we want to just ask questions of that, uh, of the bio twig or uh, comments, concerns of them? I just want to thank them for doing that. I mean, I was curious on how, what, what everybody does. And uh, um, I appreciate that, thank you. that it was done. <laughs> I, I have um, a request um, that uh, the next time, uh, the next meeting we have, can you update us on how the various labs in this state are moving towards utilization of massively parallel sequencing? Uh, it is certainly becoming a very prominent issue in the scientific meetings related to forensics. It is already used in casework in Europe and I think in Australia, though I'm not certain of that. Um, to my knowledge, it's moving extremely slowly in the United States. And it seems to me to be a major future methodology for forensic. Um, and the community seems to be extremely slow in moving in that direction in part because all of the labs are already fully occupied <laughs> with existing technology. It's not as though I don't have some sense of the uh, issue, but I'd appreciate some sort of update of what, where the state is going. Okay. And we have a meeting in October, so we can certainly put that on our agenda. 
appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> we'll now move on to laboratory disclosures. Uh, we'll begin with the New York State Police Crime Laboratory. Comments or questions? Um, I just don't, I, I don't understand the, the letter. It said a total of 35 year in serology cases with missing quality control data identified, were identified. Um, it was determined only a single case was affected. Uh, and then um, the remainder of the cases were not impacted because they included a concurrent quality control check of the reagents at the time of the analysis. So it was done on the day of use? Yes, correct. Um, so the, and then, but what are the log entries then? Is that when the reagents were made? Correct. Ah, so, okay. Yeah, so just to clarify, I think you have it, but just for the record. So what is to be done when you create a batch or a lot, the QC is done at that time, and then that establishes the QC of the lot, and it was missing entries. And so that, but in those cases that were what we deemed to be okay, then there was a day of use that served to demonstrate that the quality was done properly. Mm -hmm. uh, and in only in one case was that missing. So certainly it was still an error. We still needed to follow up on it, and it still um, was a corrective action that needed mm -hmm. to be dealt with. But so we're just trying to be very transparent to say 20, 35 cases were initially affected that we looked more carefully into and determined they were fine because there was a QC done mm -hmm. at the time, which protected that's, those. That's reasons. on a worksheet or something in the case file. Yeah, Russ Gettig, I'm the techno leader in New York State Police. Um, yeah, we have, there's logs. The Intech 7 script, which is what was affected, um, one of the reagents that was affected as far as the QC, there's strips that come in, there's a lot number, they're, they're QC checked when we first get them. But then also they're QC checked in each individual case, especially when they do a substrate. So they have a substrate negative control and then obviously the, the positive control. Mm -hmm. So, and I might mention the one case that we did um, question, we did get it back, we did test it and it was fine. Okay. The results were as the report indicated. Okay. Other questions or comments? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. We'll move on to Suffolk County Crime Laboratory. Questions or comments? I have a comment. Um, having seen, you know, the results of the bio twig, it, this is on the, this was on the, uh, the uh, recycling of, of trays back and forth between PCR, uh, pre-PCR and post-PCR. Um, it looks like it's pretty across the board that laboratories do that and they do a decontamination procedure and they monitor decontamination. And I, I had reviewed the SWIG dam guidelines on contamination control and it's consistent with what they say. Um, so I guess I think I'm, I'm. I think uh, I think actually um, Suffolk County's response was was more than needed. Um, they they switching to a to a one way, um, not bringing them out. So I I commend you on that. I think that's wonderful. But uh, what's the cost difference in that? I'm, I just look at you know the additional monitoring. Um, the use of quality assurance databases to compare samples. Kind of what's the cost benefit of that? Um, I'm Joe Galdi. Um, the, in terms of the quality assurance database, there is no cost to that. We're using the CODIS software, so it's an ongoing process uh, that we've been doing for over six years, and we have about 10 years worth of data in there. Um, it's proved very useful to us, and there is no expense as far as that's concerned. In terms of the monitoring, uh, as opposed to discarding the, uh, the plasticware, the monitoring is cheaper than that. The, the plasticware is $6 per, per amplification, whereas the monitoring 
uh, including white testing and so on, is a lot less expensive than that. I think I think we'd worked it out to it was like two or three dollars per amplification. And then, what would be the cost of having contamination? Well, we go through what we just went through, but um, so I, it may. Uh, we've shown that the process that we had come up with, um, which you know, again, as Allison has mentioned, we're not using anymore, uh, was effective in removing uh, all of the DNA from those units, both the bleach washing and the irradiating with the UV. So there's only one other, according to this, there's only one other lab that does not bring things back out of the PCR room. Correct. The rest, the rest of what, there's eight labs, so the, the rest of them do but follow the contamination control as guidelines by Sweet Dam. As long as it's keeping track of it. You know. And you know, bear in mind, we've been using uh, these plates for going on 17 years. And the incident that we reported last year was the first that we had seen with that. We've now got, you know, we had incorporated more stringent decontamination procedures following that. Other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the executive session. Can I have a motion to go into executive session to discuss matters of current investigations? Uh, that may lead to appointments, promotions, demotions, discipline, or suspensions of particular individuals. I make a motion. Second. Thank you, Dr. Kidd. Uh, all in favor, signify by the uplifted hand. It's unanimous. We'll now go into executive session. If, um, if you are not a member of the DNA subcommittee or staff, I'd like you to ask if you would uh, please vacate the room at this time. Okay, I'd like to go back on the record and report that no action was taken in executive session. Our next meeting of the DNA subcommittee will be November 3rd, 2017 in New York City. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Yeah. Dr. Kidd, do I have a second? Second. Dr. Eastman? Uh, all in favor, signify with the raised hand. It's once again, unanimous. Thank you very much. Is anybody else? Oh, I guess there's something. Uh, are we recording there, too? Yep. We're finished. We're, we're good. We're good. So we're, we're, good. we're all good. good. And just if you can tell us when we're offline again. Okay.